people might wonder, like, is she Ghanaian? Uh -huh. She doesn't look Ghanaian at all. When I go to Japan, okay. to them, I don't even look half Japanese. I look full black to them. So the same way here, I don't look Ghanaian at all. To them, I don't look Japanese at all. Or like when I speak in my Ghanaian accent. Exactly. <laughs> like you did, Bobby, want me to speak uh -huh. in my Ghanaian yeah, accent. Exactly. Okay, okay, so. okay. Wow, yes. Alright, so are you ready? We are ready. <laughs> I'm ready for my All interview. Alright, All right, so. Mm -hmm. Hello, guys. So, once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mia AK the guy who tells stories from Ghana. Okay, just chill. You know, I know you're looking at a beautiful lady. <laughs> <laughs> just wait, let me do my intro so that we get into the interview. So, as I told you, I, I, I tell unique stories from Ghana. And I show people around Ghana just to see the beautiful places you can find in Ghana. And also it's my responsibility to choose Ghana in case you are in the diaspora and you plan to visit the continent. Mm. You know, Ghana is blessed, we are rich, we have a lot of things here that you can enjoy. Yeah. And sometimes I, I also interview uh, people to share their Ghanaian experience and today I have here with me this lovely, beautiful lady here. Oh, thank you. Good. We're going to have uh, a little chat and she will share um, Ghanaian experience. I know you've been yes. wondering why is he a Ghanaian or what? <laughs> don't worry. Don't, don't, don't mind the color. We'll, um, we'll get into it and yeah. you'll get to know what it is. So, uh, please, if this is your first time, consider subscribing and then be part of the family. Yes. And enjoy my videos. Okay? Yes, yes. I also do uh, travel videos, but because okay. of COVID, I have. I'm on so, post now. Yeah, yeah. And this month yeah. I'm doing a series on Ghana man. Okay. Because okay. of the independence. Right, 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 right. So right. it's all about Ghana to the world. Okay, no problem. All right. Thank you so much for having me, by Thank the way. Thank you so much also for the invitation. Oh, How are you doing? Of course. I'm doing good. Hey, he, she's a YouTuber. She has a lovely video. Yes, guys. I've seen you've been very busy these days posting. We're trying. We're all uh, trying. I think <laughs> your last video I watched was. Um, you went to Afajato? Yes. How was yes. the experience? It was, it was so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've never climbed a mountain before. Okay. So like once I got to the top, I was like, this, like mm -hmm. those moments mm -hmm. are when you realize like how valuable life is. Exactly. Like the view, the waterfall. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is in Ghana. Exactly. Like, no, don't a sleep on your country. So yeah. um, I'll put a link below. You yep. can check it out mm -hmm. and also watch the video we are talking about. Yes. But anyway, um, yep. my name is Niai. Niai. Yes. Um, can yes. you just introduce yourself? Yes. So hello, guys, and thank you for having me again. Hello. My name is Marentia. Okay. So I do YouTube, like you just said. Mm -hmm. I'm half Japanese and half Ghanaian. Because I know that's going to be like the biggest question. Exactly. But yeah, I'm half Japanese, half Ghanaian. I grew up most of my life in Ghana. Okay. And I spent a little bit of it in Japan. And I now go to university in the US. Okay. But I grew up mainly here. And you know, now I'm here sharing wonderful stories like exactly. you are. Beautiful. But you know, a lot of people might look at you yeah. and might doubt if you're Ghanaian. But I think maybe if you open your mouth to speak, that is where they will be a little bit more. Or like when I speak in my Ghanaian accent. Exactly. <laughs> like you do, Bob, you want me to speak uh -huh, in my Ghanaian yeah, accent. Okay, okay, so okay, okay. guys, she is a Ghanaian. But let me ask this. Yeah. How was it like in your childhood being raised here in Ghana? In my childhood being raised here in Ghana, as a kid, you don't really think about race that much. You just know that you're different from the people around you. Right. So then, like, growing up here, because I was at a very naive age, I didn't feel a lot of things. I felt that when I would walk around, people would call me Obruni. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then, this is what I would like to, like, say. It's the same way people might wonder, like, is she Ghanaian? Uh -huh. She doesn't look Ghanaian at all. When I go to Japan, okay. to them, I don't even look half Japanese. I look full black to them. So the same way here, I don't here. look mm -hmm. Ghanaian yeah. at all. To them, I don't look Japanese at all. So like we have th this conversation among like mixed people all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like whichever place we go to, they'll think you're a complete foreigner okay. until yep. maybe you show mm -hmm. that you're familiar with the place. But personally, I loved growing up in Ghana. Like, I think especially I've come to appreciate it more after leaving the country, like growing up. Okay. The freedom that you get here, you won't mm -hmm. get anywhere else, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So but have you been traveling to 
Japan. Uh, Japan to experience the life yeah. there. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough, like when I was growing up, every summer I would go to Japan. Okay. And then after elementary school, my mom wanted me to experience Japan for a bit. So I lived there for three years. And then I lived in Canada for one year before coming back here for high school or SHS. So that's kind of how I spread time between all of the places. But I would definitely say I'm like very, very fortunate and even being mixed, having experienced both because I have mixed friends that have never left Japan before, don't even speak English, but they look like me. And I have like mixed friends in Ghana that have never been to their Asian half. So. Luckily enough, like wow. I've been able to experience wow. both. So, yeah. uh, take us through the journey mm -hmm. from childhood to now. Yeah. What are some of the things that you say you really appreciate mm. as not being in Japan or growing up in Japan, but fully growing up here in Africa, especially in Ghana? Hmm. Well, I would say first of all, like growing up in different countries, it gives you more of an open mind. The thing about us like humans is that we all think we're right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Exactly. So even whatever the topic is, we all think we're right. But when you travel, you realize that everyone thinks they are right. Maybe we're all right, maybe we're all wrong, but it gives you a like more open, you know, whenever someone is explaining their culture, like I'm more understanding to it compared to a lot of my friends in Japan that have maybe never left Japan before, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So. I definitely appreciate like having that type of like open mind. I would say growing up in Ghana, what do I appreciate the most? Hmm, that's a good question. Like, <laughs> I've never thought about it, but okay. personally, like small, small things that happen on a day to day basis have built me to like how I am mm -hmm. because Ghana is a very business hustle bustle. Like the streets are always busy exactly. and I think like that shows in my character all the time because mm -hmm. me, I can't mm -hmm. live in a farm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't live in a rural area. Exactly. I like the hustle and bustle of here mm -hmm. and I like the fact that you can dream and you can work and like that spirit mm -hmm. and like the camaraderie between people. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely has made me like, allowed me to be more kind. In Japan, people live a very individual life. Everyone is their life. Mm -hmm. You look forward and you walk. If like your car breaks down, no one will stop to help you. Wow. But in Ghana, if you are walking somewhere, you don't know the directions. Yeah. Boss, please, which way do I go for this, this, exactly. this, this? Oh, it goes straight, straight, straight. It's like the fact that, you know, I appreciate those like small nuances in living here. People being welcome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so interesting. Someone might ask that, mm. do you really feel the Ghanaian in you? Like... You see yourself more of a Ghanaian. I don't see myself as more of either one. Like I, I always say this. Like, depending on the month mm -hmm. or depending on the year, mm -hmm. I might feel more Japanese or I might feel more Ghanaian. It just is honestly random, and it okay. depends. <laughs> and like, I think the hardest battle, or maybe not a battle, but something that I thought about, especially as a kid, is like I don't feel like I belong to either one. Okay. So then, that definitely makes you question. Like, you're obviously not full. Mm -hmm. of either one so you can't really tell where you exactly you but also you live a very tiresome life if you try to prove to the people around you that oh me i'm Ghanaian. Yeah. i'm like ah why am i convincing <laughs> someone my, of my nationality no yeah exactly so i mean like if i don't necessarily feel like i'm more of either one i think i definitely have both depending on the time or like it might be different but i've definitely spent more time in ghana so like i definitely relates more to Ghanaian culture and like how we live here than wow. Japan yeah and with the culture here wow. as compared to Japan mm -hmm. have you been able to explore like the differences or the, the similarities the and or maybe the similarities too yeah like funny enough like there's a lot of Ghanaian people in Japan mm -hmm. yeah. and like they enjoy their time there Considering that they are very, very different, mm -hmm. they also have similarities. Okay. But I would say the biggest difference is like the culture of the people. Like we're saying camaraderie, mm -hmm. the high spirits, openness, extrovert people. You know, in Japan, people are more introverted. You, don't, you won't necessarily talk to someone around exactly. you because that's not part of their culture. Yeah. So that's a little bit different. But then it's like each one has their 
own beauty so you just try to embrace both similarities between the two japan and ghana they are both busy places oh, yeah they are both busy places like the streets of accra yep. streets of tokyo mm -hmm. it's always noisy it's always fast <laughs> and i think that's why me i can't live in a rural area because okay. i'm so used, used to, to living in accra and living in tokyo mm -hmm. i can't imagine living in a you know wow. yeah i think you need to visit the northern region to yeah. explore more there yes <laughs> i really want to go there but you know, even like from what I've heard about it and what I've seen, I think it would be so beautiful, exactly. but I can't imagine myself living, you know. Way to see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. But talking about Ghana, you've been traveling. Yeah. How are you experiencing traveling in Ghana? What would you say? Are they safe? Do you enjoy any difficulties? I mean, okay, traveling in Ghana, first of all, is... I love traveling. I like adventure, mm -hmm. and that's that's what I want to document on my YouTube channel. So that's what I do. As far as the safety of it, mm -hmm. I think obviously being like I would be looked as as a foreigner mm -hmm. to a person that doesn't know me. So I always recommend like going with someone that's familiar with that area. So whether it's my whether it's like the driver or whether it's my dad, or whether it's someone. But also, I feel like a little bit of the worry also comes from being like a female. Like, I always go with, like, either the driver is a guy, or so I always go with someone. But I've never thought, like, intentionally, I need to be safe or anything okay. like that. Okay. I definitely think Ghana is, like, very, very peaceful <laughs> and safe compared to a lot of other African countries. And so, like, I've never felt in danger over here, especially with how welcoming and nice everyone is. But maybe you will need someone, especially if you don't speak the language, yeah. to help you negotiate. Otherwise, they'll cheat you yeah, exactly. or things like that. <laughs> but I would say Ghana overall is pretty safe. Some of the struggles, like being a content creator, mm -hmm. the internet, ah, the internet, the speed of, the the speed of internet, <laughs> like network connection mm -hmm. to upload your videos. Um, but that's a very first world problem. And you can easily overlook that exactly. for the experience that you have. But maybe something like that. Honestly, difficulties. I know there are lots, but so many things like I don't realize that it's even a difficulty because I'm so used to living in Ghana. Exactly. And then when someone comes and then they is so different to them, then I, I'm like, oh, I didn't okay. even realize. <laughs> like how we're always late. Exactly. I'm so used to it that me too. I make sure they, they, they I'm late. Call it African time. African time. <laughs> Ghana man time. Ghana but. Time. Someone that comes will really feel that as a stressful yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. But yeah. But before I ask my main question, mm -hmm. talking about language. Yeah. How many languages do you speak? Both I Italian speak. And so I speak language. Japanese fluently, mm -hmm. and I speak English. Yeah. I understand Chi, yeah. but I can't speak it. So you can't speak any of the local language. No, but I can understand it. Mm -hmm. And. I'd, me, myself, I don't know why I can't speak <laughs> Okay, maybe uh, the friends around you. The friends around, around me. And it's like, me, the way I see language is that naturally we learn language because we have to. Like, if you are stuck in an environment and you need to adapt and you need to learn that language, you'll learn it. But my particular like upbringing in Ghana, I was able to really go smoothly with English. Okay. So I never really had the urgency to learn it. I would love to be able to speak tree fluently, but I understand every single thing like you say. You can okay. speak to me in tree, I'll respond in English. Is, is your dad? Uh, My dad's from Kweu. Kweu. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he that speaks tree, Ga, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He speaks Ga. He speaks tree, he speaks Ga, he speaks Japanese okay. fluently. I'm, I'm a Ga, so I speak okay. Ga. Okay. And I have um, another YouTube channel that okay. I teach Ga there. Really? Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so okay. maybe if you want to learn Ga, I'll just recommend it to you. Okay. Now, yeah. to my next question. Yeah. What are some of the challenges you go through as a light-skinned person here in Ghana? Hmm. Do you have it as an advantage or disadvantage here? First of all, like, I would like to put out, like, in general, mm -hmm. I think we will always be more privileged. It's not right, mm -hmm. but I understand, I completely understand that we always have more privileges than, you know, being yeah. full black which makes no sense, but I completely get that. But to your question, like specifically for mixed people, mm -hmm. I would say it's just more of like the mental battles you go through of like, which country do I belong to? Every country I go to, I'm being called a foreigner. 
every country I go to, I'm not being accepted as being one of their own. So like, where am I supposed to be? <laughs> where like, am I going to have yeah, to? and it's it's particularly like maybe heads for especially if like you you feel you're part of them, you know. So like when you're a kid and you're not thinking much about race, to you you think you're Ghanaian, you think you're yeah. Ghanaian, yeah. but then people will make sure you know you're not exactly. you're not Ghanaian, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So I think like that can be hurtful sometimes, but you know, like as you go through life, you it's, it's just it's just part of life. Uh, like we all wish, you know, mm -hmm. race wasn't something that brought exactly. differences among people, but that's the reality of what it is. I definitely think like um, the difficulties of at least from what I've experienced from being like biracial is more of like that feeling of being lost, not knowing where you belong. But as far as like actual hard difficulties, I, I personally haven't experienced much. But I know that we face a lot more trouble when we're outside than when we're here. Because when we're in Japan, they don't think we're mixed. They think we're full black. So I know other mixed friends that have maybe gone to Japanese schools that were bullied because they were black. Because like, again, so they bad. think they are, they are, they don't think we're mixed or they don't think, you know, so you sometimes you can even speak to them in Japanese and they'll try they'll still try to speak English because they're like, oh no 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 you know, but I think that's why I also appreciate Ghana like like you won't get that level you get, of welcoming. You, you get that kind of differences or people. Yeah 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 yeah. And even when people call you Obroni, like when you are a kid, it might be hurtful, but yeah. we know that it's a joke, you know, yeah, most exactly. of the time. So then, is. For me, at least here, yeah, like the negative feelings or things I felt are very minimal. I would say. I recently got to know that you started cooking for yourself. You were you were complaining that you were eating and you were gaining weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Yes. So yes. I realized you started cooking. Yes. What, what, what food can you cook best? One like personally, me, I don't find cooking difficult. Mm -hmm. Because I just think if you want to cook something, you search the recipe, you just follow it, right? Yeah, exactly. So me, I don't get the whole confusion behind cooking, but me, I have friends who can't cook. So me, okay. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, you see, I barely cook Ghanaian dishes because, okay. like, mm -hmm. the struggle of cooking it, it doesn't make sense to me when I can go and buy it for 5C, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how I'm thinking. Exactly. But Ghanaian dishes take so much more preparation. Exactly. That's why I... Mm -hmm barely cook it i make more like japanese dishes or like western dishes but i'm not coming to lie to you and say me i cook every day yeah, yeah. cooking is a rare occasion i know i know cooking is a rare occasion <laughs> I, know, I watched that video and yeah. when you were talking people were like oh i'm putting on weight because you were enjoying more fast food yeah 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 i yeah. was like i i know i know about that yeah, yeah. but i definitely want to like know I, I at least want to know how to make like all the Ghanaian dishes I enjoy. Oh, YouTube is there. We have a lot of YouTube. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's quite. But you know when your grandmother's mm -hmm. cooking is uh -huh. different. Uh -huh. I want my. I, I, that's the why. I, yeah. So my grandma told me how to make light soup on my channel. Oh, okay. So yes, I, I yes, want yes, to I be that. learning different, you know, dishes uh -huh. from her because my grandma in Japan is really old now. Oh, so okay. I can't really learn cooking from her. And it made me realize, okay, while my grandma in Ghana is young, I should really, really try and, yeah, it. yeah. Wow, that's really interesting and yeah. a good conversation. You've been in Ghana here. Yeah. You've, you've, you've experienced it all. Mm -hmm. What would you say to especially um, Africans born outside Africa, or let's say Ghanaians in the diaspora, mm. who would love to come home? What would you tell them? To people who would like to come home? Yeah. Ghana is the most welcoming place and as far as like actual technicalities are involved Ghana is one of the easier countries out of other African countries to come back to because of safety and you know our problems here are smaller compared to some other African countries so I know a big concern for a lot of people is like it's dangerous like you go and you go and starve I'm like, ah, no, no, no. that's such a stereotype that needs to be destroyed. Yeah, they should come and explore, mm -hmm. look, take a look for themselves. At least I'm the type of person, like, I won't judge anything, I won't judge anyone until I experience it for myself. So no matter what anyone on the internet tells you, you will have your own thoughts, you will have your exactly. own views. Come and see it for yourself. And I personally don't think you'll regret it. But Wow. So 
If you have the opportunity to change one thing in Ghana, what would it be and why? Hmm. <laughs> That's a hard feel question. Free, feel free. Wow, change one thing in Ghana. Hmm. Feel free. <laughs> change one thing in Anything Ghana. I have two things in mind. Okay. One is I really think sooner or later for, for us to be able to really, really grow, mm -hmm. we're going to need a selfless leader. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the situation of the country, like politics and things like that, not to any particular party or anything in general, everyone is going for self-seeking, you know. That's why me, I'm the first person to say, me, I yeah. can't be a president. Yeah. Because <laughs> me, I can't be a president. But okay. the country will really benefit off of someone that is not looking to see how they can increase their bank but rather the whole country's exactly. bank but that's way more complicated and easier said than done exactly. but the other thing that comes to the top of my mind i was actually talking to other youtubers about the difference between ghana and nigeria like youtube culture and people in nigeria really support their own youtubers like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. their own artists mm -hmm. nigerian people are really the proud support, of being great. from nigeria mm -hmm. meanwhile like in ghana when someone's doing something you rarely see other people supporting that person if anything you see them laughing at that person until maybe they've blown and mm -hmm. then now you say oh i was joking you know <laughs> in ghana in ghana we hardly really patronize like our own you know exactly. we always look outside to see who we can support but i think if we could change one thing which is obviously like can't be changed overnight and it starts from even me myself like yeah embracing you know artists here more and doing things like that but i think if we can change that to support our own more and love and be prideful of our own so many other things will also start falling in place i think wow. yeah this is so brilliant <laughs> this is so brilliant you know i have a lot of people who watch me from the diaspora mm. that's at now i watch it mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them don't know much about africa right is there any perception you would like to change about Africa? The perception a lot of people, which is surprising, but a lot of people that they still have is that Africa is a jungle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people even think they don't even they don't know the different countries in Africa. You know, they call Africa Africa as a, as a, country. As a country, right? And you know, they think we're struggling mm -hmm. here and it's you know there's nothing positive over here. That's what a lot of people think. Um, that's why I love you too, because my mom's side of the family, some of them have never been to Ghana yet. So their entire perception is from what the news portrays. But now with media and like YouTube, now they're like, wow, I want to come to Ghana. So I think just breaking that initial stereotype that should have never been created in the first place that we live in a jungle. Yeah. That we live where there's no food. It's so, it's so crazy. How can people think human beings live in a jungle? Yeah, and I'm telling you like, the people here, like, we're some of the most happiest people. Exactly. Like, we're some of the most happiest mm -hmm. people. Because it is true. I also don't want to completely discount the fact that, like, Ghana, because it's a developing country, so once you leave the immediate Accra, mm -hmm. there will be more and more, like, poverty yeah. you see. So it exists. There are places that don't have lights. There are places that are... But even with that, that's not what the... Exactly, the media. The image mm -hmm. of you know, a con our country should be considering everything else that's here. So I'll say like, let's just break that first thought mm -hmm. and come to Ghana. I think that's one of the reasons why we as a content creator, yeah. creators are trying to yeah. do videos to change yeah. the perception for people to see the kind of life we have right. here in Ghana. Oh yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. Guys, I wish we could continue, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe a part two. <laughs> Maybe a part two. It, it, as I always say, if mm -hmm. you really want me to bring her back, um, just comment on the section, uh, the comment section below. Let me yeah. know. And I'll try my best to bring her back. But anyway, I'd love to. Please try and check her channel out. Uh, yes, she has please. A lovely content. And Charlie, she's a go-getter. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, a go-getter too. Um, <laughs> So please try support us what we do yes. uh, try support her channel and Thank let me you. know what do you think about this video okay so until then i see you on my next episode yes my name has been Niai, aka Ganyabi.
Would you like to mention your YouTube channel name again? Because yes. I'll put the link down there. Okay, my YouTube channel name is kind of long. It's Marintia Goto Williams. Mm -hmm. So that's my Instagram, YouTube, social media. Everywhere. So please come check me out. And okay, please guys, check it out. Uh, we'll see you next time on my episodes. As I always say, my name is Nia, a.k.a. Ganyobi. Yes. Ola Bawo. Yes, what does that mean? Peace out. Say Ola Bawo. Ola Bawo. Your is blood goes sleep. Yeah. Wow, your blood goes sleep. Ola Bawo. Ola Bawo. Ola Bawo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next time. See you, eh? Bye. Bye. <laughs>